so I am generally packed. This time after going to Vancouver, I definitely prioritized only bringing what I need. So I have about three pants in there, a couple underwear, sports bras, and jackets and stuff. I'm gonna bring my down jacket just in case. I wanna be outside at night and it's gonna be cold. Generally, everything fits in there nicely. Those are my hiking shoes. And then over here, this is my tripod that I will be bringing. And this is just my bag of food that I prepared for the trip. This is just in case Riley has an accident, which I don't believe she will, but it's nice to have it just in case. I have coconut water, trail mix. This is cornbread that I cut up. It came in a pretty big piece, but I cut it up so I could snack on it while driving if possible. I have grapes. I also have, I have a cherry tomatoes down there. Very few of them. So now I'm gonna just put the stuff in the car. I actually have to remember, I cannot forget about Riley's food. Um, I'm feeling a little rushed to leave, which I really shouldn't because if I forget anything, that would suck. So I am probably going to put this stuff away. I still have to put out water for the cats in the automated water feeder thing. Then I should be good to go. Maybe I'll clean up a little bit more because I have been having a flea problem. Unfortunately, last week when they did the house, they treated the house, I did not think that I had a problem. So after they treated it, I didn't vacuum every day. I did put medication on the cats, topical treatment on the back, but I think I must have put it on incorrectly for Milo because I saw flea dirt on him more than Sammy. Sammy is generally really clean, although I have found two fleas on Sammy, but just yesterday I went to the vet and I got another medication that they recommend and then I applied it to them yesterday. So I think it's working. Um, I have never found more than one at a time on them and the flea dirt on Milo is more than Sammy, but it's not anything crazy. I did brush them both yesterday to kind of rid them of the dirt if possible, and I've been vacuuming every day. It's honestly fucking awful. Um, it has really been affecting me emotionally a lot because I have like 20 bites on my legs. It's truly the worst thing in the world, and I didn't buy anti-itch cream until yesterday, so I've been itching them like crazy. I've been popping them, piercing my skin, pus is coming out and it's really miserable because I'm finding new bites every day. I have some all over my body as, as well. I even have some, I have one right here. It has been making me feel like I don't even want to be home. My home doesn't feel like home anymore because it just feels disgusting to me. This flea infestation is not super bad. It's really hard for me to tell what state it's at because I can't tell if they're actually dying off of the cats or like, I don't know how bad it is. It doesn't seem that bad, but maybe it could be. You just never know where the eggs are. I find dead ones occasionally. Like I saw one on the couch yesterday under Riley and Riley has been on flea and tick medication regularly since she could have it. So um, I wasn't too concerned about her and she doesn't show any signs of Please, like she never scratches herself. Well, so something about Riley that's kind of interesting is that she never scratches her neck. You know how dogs bring their hind leg and they itch this part? She never does that. So since the flea thing started, I was kind of expecting to see her do that, but she hasn't at all. She doesn't show any signs that fleas are on her. And I went through her coat with the brush yesterday and didn't pick up any flea dirt. So I'm assuming that flea that died just landed on her, got in contact with her skin and died because that's how they work. So that was good. But um, just to show you guys how miserable I have been, I will show you my bites. So this is really disgusting, isn't it? I have more on the side. But look, they're, they're all like pussing because I've been terrible and scratching them like crazy. They are so itchy, it's so hard not to. So I've been applying the anti-itch cream every single time it fades. There's more on the back. I have some on my stomach too. I'm kind of happy to be going out this weekend and not being home because I just feel so gross at home. Yesterday at night, I had long pants on 
and I had socks on and then I taped the area between my ankles where my skin was exposed just to prevent that area from getting any more bites and it sucked. I hate having pants on when I'm on the couch and lounging. There's just, it's just not comfortable to me. My landlord said they're gonna come by next week again to treat the house just as a precaution. I want to do it because I hate this. This is so awful and I need to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to get rid of it. Alrighty, everything is ready to go. Luggage, cooler, Riley, my hiking shoes, and then there's water. And that should be all I need. It's about 10.30. Hello. I actually didn't really plan on recording too much during my journey over there because I just really wanted to be efficient and I didn't want to spend extra time recording, taking out the camera and all of that stuff. So unfortunately though, right now I am approaching Vegas and there is a slowdown for like 22 minutes. Um, and then after that, after a couple miles, there's going to be another half hour slowdown and it is disappointing because I am sure that a lot of these people are going to Vegas and it kind of bums me out that I have to take this route to get to where I'm going because I have zero interest in Vegas. I think I'm gonna get there around eight o'clock. I didn't realize I was changing time zones. So for Pacific time, I will be getting there at seven and then it'll become eight o'clock there. I still have, I'd say, let me check my phone. I have just under four hours left of driving still. And I'd say, I would say that I have spent a total of one hour slowed down because of traffic so far. I guess another thing that I am a bit surprised about is that up until now, I haven't really been feeling too much fatigue. I wasn't dreading the drive at all. I was having a pretty decent time. Um, last time I did a drive for four hours, I really hated it, but for some reason today, I feel fine. I am so excited to see what the Airbnb is gonna look like and just not having other people around. I mean, I think it is within a neighborhood, but it seems like it's on the far end. So I just want space to myself and not have to worry about seeing somebody else on the property or nearby and just like let Riley off leash the whole weekend. It just sounds really nice. And it's also really cool because I have never taken a road trip by myself before. The only road trip I have done in the past was with my ex-boyfriend from New Jersey to Florida and we took turns driving my car, this car, and that one just sucked. I don't know if we were trying to rush it or something, I just remembered both of us at times were driving and we were falling asleep which is so bad and really 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 unpleasant so I was a little bit worried about that today but I guess four hours is still quite a while. I was really hoping to be further than this by now. I actually wanted to bring my yoga mat because it seems like there was a deck area on the outside of my Airbnb that I, get, that I could just lay the mat out and do exercise. And I loved that idea, having like a beautiful backdrop, being outdoors and doing it, but I forgot my mat. So I won't be able to do that. Maybe there'll be a cushiony mat-like thing around there that I can use. Otherwise, ah, uh, that idea is done for. So this is what I would wake up to if this convertible door was open. Unfortunately, it's really, 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 really windy out. So having it open kind of sucks. Everything in here just blows all over the place. But it is absolutely beautiful. Hi, puppers.
Hello, so I just took Riley to play some fetch at Maxwell Park. It's super close to my Airbnb and it was great. Um, beautiful views behind and it was so easily accessible. I love that. So far, my Airbnb is... It would be better if it wasn't so windy. My shower was so awful because I don't think she had enough propane in there. So my heat kept going out, the water kept going cold, and I would have to keep restarting it so it would light up the propane and then heat up the water temporarily. But with the wind and with the water continually going cold, it was so freaking cold and it was a very unpleasant shower experience. The Airbnb itself is kind of as expected. I do think it's a little weird, admittedly, to not have running water. I can only wash my face in the shower. So it's a little strange. I mean, the view is definitely great, but I just don't think I can take full advantage of it because of how windy it is. Tomorrow, unfortunately, is gonna be thunderstorms. So I don't know if I can stay here. There's nothing that I would want to do when it's raining. So I wasn't gonna drive back right away. I was hoping to go somewhere else around here where there, it's not raining maybe drive like one to two hours somewhere where it's not raining and then explore that. I was really wanting to go to Zion National Park. I was gonna drive there now. I don't think I was gonna hike in Zion. I was just gonna drive around and take pictures and give her a chance to rest in the car because Zion doesn't allow pets unless it's on one specific trail and campgrounds, but they have to be leashed and I'm not gonna go to a campground, so it's appropriate to let her stay in the car while I get out, stop around, drive around, look at stuff. I went to Zion many years ago in 2011 with my parents and I was a teenager then so I was just a bitch. <laughs> I was just so unhappy during the trip. Every time my parents wanted to stop and take pictures I was annoyed about it and this memory has just stuck with me all these years, that trip when I went with them to all these beautiful places and I was just so unhappy the whole time so I always feel sad when I think of that memory because if I went there now with them I would love it so much and sometimes I just regret it, my behavior. It would be really nice to visit there again. It is so beautiful here in Utah. This neighborhood seems a little strange because it's a lot of dirt roads and it's just abnormal compared to what I'm used to for neighborhoods, but I actually don't think it's really that bad. It's so beautiful. There's like a ton of cattle right here. Look at the left. Oh, gorgeous. Can you imagine having this view every single day from your house, waking up and seeing all of this? All this land for the cattle to graze. There's just not that many people here. It's amazing. So basically right now I am waiting to get in through the south entrance and there's a line so it's slow. Apparently Zion parking is full but I wasn't really sure if I was going to park. I wanted to maybe go on a trail but if there's no parking for that then I probably can't. And I was just going to drive around and take pictures and sightsee because it should be incredibly beautiful. I've been awful and I haven't had real food for a meal since I left my house. I've just been living on grapes and cornbread and water. So uh, I finally got some food. This is Pad CU from a Thai restaurant and I am here in my humble abode. Oh my goodness. In the meantime, I am starving. And I get to look at this while I eat.
So I am at Echo Bay, which is some random ass area um, southeast, I think, of Las Vegas, or maybe it's directly east or northeast, I don't remember. But I wanted to still, you know, explore a little bit because I left early, 8 o'clock, because it would be thunderstorming around my Airbnb and there would be no point in exploring over there if it was uh, raining and everything. Break. Good. So I started heading back, but I wanted to take a different route instead of just going on one straight highway. I wanted to take a little detour through an area that seemed like it would pass by scenic stuff, like there was a lake, there was green on the map, so I was like, ooh, this looks nice, <laughs> and I took it. And I stopped by this area to get some gas, and it was closer to the water. So this is so beautiful, wow. I don't really think I'll stay here that long though because how long can you really sit here and stare? Sometimes she just finds random stuff on the ground to play fetch with and this stick right here. She dug it out. Now she wants to play. I don't really know if I like the idea of her running along rocks though. Sounds just as bad as pavement. <laughs> Alright, I am driving to Hoover Dam right now. I left my Airbnb at about 8 in the morning. I kind of just woke up naturally and it was starting to thunderstorm and it was still windy as hell. So leaving early was fine. Honestly, I didn't sleep well at all both nights because it was so windy and it was so loud and it was also kind of cold. Um, the electricity that they provide there was so minimal because she has one solar panel on the cabin and I feel like it only lasts one to three hours and I used it a little bit for the heated blanket so that ran out so fast and I was a little bit surprised I guess that my expectations for this cabin were way higher than I experienced mainly because I'm not used to outhouse bathrooms and showers and I did not know that Hurricane Utah, well I stayed somewhere further east and it was just so freaking windy that really disrupted my sleep pretty badly. But yeah, so I started driving along the way home but I didn't want to just straight up go home, I wanted to check other stuff out as well throughout the day today so it's still super early. It's 10.45 in the morning, and I kind of lost an hour, I guess, because I was in mountain time zone. So now I'm back in Pacific, and Shane suggested that I check out the Hoover Dam. Originally, I did want to come through this area. I'm taking the 167 south, and I am near the Lake Mead National Park. Earlier, I stopped at Echo Bay, which is this random, random area. I need a gas, so I stopped by there to get some, and along the way I took some beautiful pictures. There was a lake there, but yeah, now I am on my way to Hoover Dam, and maybe after Hoover, I don't really see myself spending too much time there because I can't take Riley out of the car, and I'm not even sure what the parking situation is like. I guess after that, I will continue searching to see if there's anything cool. Um, this whole drive though that I've been doing down here, I took the 15 South and now I'm on 167 South and this whole drive has been so beautiful. I set up my tripod to record the side as I drove and I love it so much. Uh, it's going to make me kind of sad to not see all this land anymore. I mean, when, in San Diego, it still has pretty decent terrain. It is beautiful, but there's just so much civilization, you know? When you see all this land and only one stretch of road going through it, I think that's just, it feels so magical to me. So, I think I have, have about 25 minutes until I get to the Hoover Dam. And then it will be more spontaneity. I will improvise or else I will plan on checking out after that. 
So right now I am on the Teutonia Peak Trail in the Mojave National Preserve. This is my stop after the Hoover Dam. Um, at the Hoover Dam I completely forgot that there's a billion people there and there was a lot of walking to actually get to the dam from where I parked. So I just took a side picture and then left because I didn't really like the idea of walking so far and getting to the dam while leaving her in the car in a parking lot that's probably crowded with a ton of people passing by and stuff. So now we're here and I think we are almost to the end maybe. This trail is a little scary because you see these things on the side. She actually stepped on one earlier. Luckily it was on her front paw and it was a small one, didn't go too deep, but it sucks because I don't want her to be straying too far off the trail. Sometimes she hugs the sides. Normally it's not a big deal, but sometimes there's that crap on the floor here in the desert. And it's a... Uh, it's hot, but I feel like sometimes when I hike, I just give up too easily. Um, if I didn't have her around, I wouldn't focus on the heat too much, but I don't want her to be overheated, especially if we go too far and then we have to come all the way back. I am not sure if we're gonna go back just yet. She does seem hot actually, but we are almost to the end. So maybe I'll just head back now. Come on, Pops, this way. Hi, it's Monday evening. So I decided to talk about my trip today instead of yesterday because when I got home, you know, a lot of driving, I'm tired. I didn't really want to sit in front of the camera and talk about everything. I wanted to just do stuff I enjoy. <laughs> Not to say that I don't enjoy this, but just exhausted. Energy levels were low. Let me turn off this notification sound. It can be so distracting. But anyways, let's see. The Airbnb that I stayed in was a cabin. It was literally just a bedroom and the side frame would open up and then you could see the outside and it was beautiful, but there were factors about it that I didn't realize going in that I didn't really like ultimately. So first off, Hurricane Utah was very windy. Both nights that I stayed there, the wind was crazy loud super loud and it was like all night so while i was staying in the cabin it was just very difficult to fall asleep and also it made showering very cold and difficult so the first time i tried to shower the propane was out apparently but i didn't know that because i had never used something like that before so i would turn on the water and then the fire would light in the water heater thing i don't know what the hell it is but it would light up i would see it light up and then it would just go out so i would turn on the water, use that water on myself for like three seconds while it was still warm, and then shower constantly that way by constantly turning on the water to have it light up for a couple seconds. And that was just awful. I was very cold. It was just not a pleasant way to shower. Plus the way that the outhouse was, it was just kind of dinky, you know? I'm sure that, you know, nature enthusiasts are totally fine with stuff like this, but I just kind of realized that I didn't want to deal with stuff like that when traveling, so the toilet also being out there in the outhouse, that means I would have to breathe the wind, the cold, feeling kind of exposed and stuff, and eventually I realized that I just stopped drinking water because I didn't want to pee as much as I normally do. I drink a lot of water normally, so I'm pissing every hour, maybe less. There was also a dog or dogs that came onto the property at night or throughout the day, so I saw one dog up close and it looked harmless, but I really dislike roaming dogs. I don't think that should be a thing. Um, to me, that shows that the owner is irresponsible. So anyways, this dog was constantly on my property. And then at night when I was inside sleeping and it was very windy and dark out, I heard multiple dogs barking. And I'm pretty sure they were on my property because I saw a dog walk by the A-frame thing is translucent, so I was able to see a figure walk by. That was something that I didn't expect to deal with on this trip, so I was kind of surprised that it happened. I'd say basically my Airbnb kind of taught me that I don't want to actually live too much like a nature-y person. I just want basic necessities. So I actually don't think I'm the type of person that wants to 
staying in luxury when I'm traveling, I think that's completely unnecessary because I would be interested in exploring the surrounding areas and then settle in at my Airbnb for the evening. And what is required of that is basically a bed or a couch, a bathroom with a toilet and a shower that worked well and I think that would suffice it for me. I'm glad that I stayed in this place and I learned all of these things that I would prefer to have in the future when I do travel. In terms of the drive, I think without traffic, any traffic, it would be seven hours and 15 minutes. So on the way over there, it actually took me 10 hours with traffic and I did stop twice outside of that, maybe three times two times for gas maybe and then maybe one time for food but I did not stop for very long at all. I did realize though that I'm very happy about is that I am pretty tolerant when it comes to long distance driving. I originally thought that I would really struggle for this eight hour drive but it turned out that I did pretty well. I think that I can handle these drives pretty decently. So when I do go to Montana next year that is something I'm very excited about and I'm really hoping to do. It will be approximately 18 hours, I think, and I'm hoping to do that in two days. So I think that just opens a lot of doors for me because now I feel confident in doing trips to further places knowing that long hours of driving per day won't bother me too much. Riley actually did very great in the car. I mean, she's always great in the car but I had a lot of um, pressure or guilt because I was like, man, she's in the car for so long. She doesn't get to stretch her legs. Like I just felt bad. Um, I never went too long without letting her out once in a while. I'd say three hours was my max, but I focus too much sometimes on her comfort when she just looks fine and I end up feeling guilty myself and it's a lot of unnecessary emotions. I definitely would actually change her crate because I realized that the crates that I'm using for her actually could be larger. I wouldn't say that they're too small for her, but she basically fits in it well, but it's like a cozy fit. So I would actually be interested in maybe having a wider crate a little bit wider, a little bit longer, just so she has a little bit more room to stretch out her legs. But I don't care about her actually moving around in there because I always have her lying down while driving. Overall, I am really, really glad that I made the trip because I had a feeling I would really enjoy it anyways, but I've never done something like this before. So to go through with it, feel all of that freedom of like driving wherever I wanna go, Whatever I want to plan to do, I get to do it. Like I don't have any restrictions that just felt really great. I've never really had a vacation like that in a sense. Anytime that I've went anywhere with my parents in the past, we always were on a tour and we did go to many places. We've been to Europe, China, Mexico, we went to Cancun and we went to several countries in Europe too. And then also seven years ago, me and my parents did that like Midwest tour around like Arizona, Utah, we went to a bunch of different places, but I just never liked those vacations. And it always makes me feel bad later on to think about how I wasn't appreciative of being able to see all these different places when I was young, but I just I hate tours. Waking up at seven in the morning is just too early for me to enjoy seeing 10 things all in one day. They cram way too much stuff in and then I also have to spend it with other random strangers that I don't even know. I don't really like traveling like that. So after this weekend though, I am super, super excited to do it again. In fact, I am so tempted to do another one in December, but I don't really know if that's wise for my wallet. Ugh. But Montana is definitely one I'm absolutely going to do next year if I can manage it. I am hoping to stay for a week, up to a week, in Montana if I do go and I am beyond excited. I already found an Airbnb that I really love that I would like to stay at. Um, it's 1.35 a night. Actually, so this past weekend my Airbnb was 1.30 a night. Not worth it at all. I feel like it should have been charged like 50 bucks instead. 1.30? I can't believe I paid for that. Uh, I think that summed up my trip relatively well. 
and God, I, I just can't wait to do it again. I had so much fun. Ooh, a new life experience for me. It was exhilarating.